Abiyya, sometimes spelled obi, abiyya, obeya, or oba, is a system of spiritual and healing practices developed among enslaved West Africans in the West Indies. Abiyya is difficult to define, as it is not a single, unified set of practices. The word abiyya was historically not often used to describe one's own practices. Some scholars, such as Diana Patton, have contended that what constitutes abiyya in Jamaica has been constructed by white society, particularly law enforcement. Accordingly, different Afro-Caribbean communities use their own terminology to describe the practice, such as science, among the Jamaican Windward Maroons. Abia is similar to other Afro-American religions such as Palo, Haitian Voodoo, Santeria, and Hoodoo in that it includes communication with ancestors and spirits and healing rituals. Nevertheless, it differs from religions like Voodoo and Santeria in that there is no explicit canon of gods or deities that is worshipped, and the practice is generally an individual action rather than part of a collective ceremony or offering. Variants of Abia are practiced in the Bahamas and in the Caribbean nations of Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, and the Virgin Islands, as well as by the Igbo people of Nigeria. In some cases, aspects of these folk religions have survived through syncretism with Christian symbolism and practice introduced by European colonials and slave owners. Origins In parts of the Caribbean where Abia developed, slaves were taken from a variety of African nations with differing spiritual practices and religions. It is from these arrivals and their spiritualisms that Abia originates. The origins of the word abia have been contested in the academic community for nearly a century. There is not a widely accepted consensus on what region or language the word derives from, and there is a politics to every hypothesis. Orlando Patterson promoted an Akan TWI etymology, suggesting that the word came from Gold Coast communities. He and other proponents of the Akan TWI hypothesis argued that the word was derived from Obayifo, a word associated with malevolent magic by Ashanti priests. Akan, witchcraft. Quasi Kanadu suggested a somewhat updated version of this etymology, suggesting that Bayi, the neutral force used by the Obayifo, is the source material, a word with a slightly less negative connotation. The first time in Jamaican history the term, Abia was used in the colonial literature was in reference to Nanny of the Maroons and Akan woman, considered the ancestor of the Windward Maroon community and celebrated for her role in defeating the British and securing a land treaty in 1739, as an old witch and a hag. Abia has also received a great deal of attention for its role in Taki's Rebellion also in Akan, the 1760 conflict that spurred the passage of the first Jamaican anti-Abia law. Despite its associations with a number of Akan slaves and rebellions, the origin of Abia has been criticized by several writers who hold that an Igbo origin is more likely. According to W.E.B. Du Bois Institute database, he traces Abia to the Dibia or Oba Igbo, doctoring traditions of the Igbo people. Specialists in Oba also spelled Abia were known as Ndi Oba Igbo, Oba people and practiced the same activities as the Abia men and women of the Caribbean like predicting the future and manufacturing charms. Among the Igbo there were oracles known as Oba which were said to be able to talk. Parts of the Caribbean where Abia was most active imported a large number of its slaves from the Igbo-dominated Bight of Biafra. This interpretation is also favored by Kenneth Bilby, arguing that Dibia connotes a neutral master of knowledge and wisdom. In another hypothesis, the Efik language is the root of Abia, where the word Abia comes from the Efik Ubio meaning a bad omen. Melville Herskovitz endorsed a different Efik origin, arguing that Abia was a corruption of an Efik word for doctor. In colonial British communities, aside from referring to the set of spiritual practices, Abia also came to refer to a physical object, such as a talisman or charm, that was used for evil magical purposes. The item was referred to as an Abia item, e.g., an Abia ring or an Abia stick, translated as ring used for witchcraft or stick used for witchcraft, respectively. Abia incorporated various beliefs from the religions of later migrants to the colonies where it was present. Abia also influenced other religions in the Caribbean, e.g. Christianity, which incorporated some Abia beliefs. History The term Abia is first found in documents from the early 18th century, as in its connection to Nanny of the Maroons. 
Colonial sources referred to the spiritual powers attributed to her in a number of derogatory ways, ranging from referring to her as the rebel's old be a woman, to characterizing her as unsexed and more bloodthirsty than Maroon men. Maroon oral traditions discuss her feats of science in rich detail. She is said to have used her abia powers to kill British soldiers in Nanny's Pot, a boiling pot without a flame below it that soldiers would lean into and fall in, to quickly grow food for her starving forces, and to catch British bullets and either fire them back or attack the soldiers with a machete. Discussion of abia became even more frequent when it was made illegal in Jamaica after Taki's war. During the rebellion, Taki is said to have consulted an obiman who prepared for his forces a substance that would protect them from British bullets, which boosted their confidence in executing the rebellion. In 1787, a letter to an English newspaper referred to Obiu women interpreting the wishes of the dead at the funeral of a murdered slave in Jamaica. A footnote explained the term as meaning wise women. A continuing source of white anxiety related to Abia was the belief that practitioners were skilled in using poisons, as mentioned in Matthew Lewis' journal of a West India proprietor. Many white Jamaicans accused women of such poisonings. One case Lewis discussed was that of a young woman named Minetta who was brought to trial for attempting to poison her master. Lewis and others often characterized the women they accused of poisonings as being manipulated by Obi men, who they contended actually provided the women with the materials for poisonings. The laws forbidding abia reflected this fear. An anti abia law passed in Barbados in 1818 specifically forbade the possession of any poison, or any noxious or destructive substance. A doctor who examined the medicine chest of an abia man arrested in Jamaica in 1866 identified white arsenic as one of the powders in it, but could not identify the others. The unnamed correspondent reporting this affirmed. The Jamaica herbal is an extensive one, and comprises some highly poisonous juices, of which the Abia men have a perfect knowledge." During the mid-19th century the appearance of a comet in the sky became the focal point of an outbreak of religious fanatical millennialism among the mile men of Jamaica. Spiritualism was at that time sweeping the English-speaking nations as well, and it readily appealed to those in the Afro-Caribbean diaspora, as spirit contact, especially with the dead, is an essential part of many African religions. During the conflict between Mile and Abia, the Mile men positioned themselves as the good opponents to evil Abia. They claimed that Abia men stole people's shadows, and they set themselves up as the helpers of those who wished to have their shadows restored. Mile men contacted spirits in order to expose the evil works they ascribed to the Abia men, and led public parades which resulted in crowd hysteria that engendered violent antagonism against Abia men. The public discovery of buried Abia charms, presumed to be of evil intent, led on more than one occasion to violence against the rival Abia practitioners. Such conflicts between supposedly good and evil spiritual work could sometimes be found within plantation communities. In one 1821 case brought before court in Berbice, an enslaved woman named Madeline allegedly died as a result of being accused of malevolent abia that caused the drivers at Op Hoop Van Beter Plantation to fall ill. The man implicated in her death, a spiritual worker named Willem, conducted an illegal Minye Mama dance to divine the source of the abia, and after she was chosen as the suspect, she was tortured to death. Laws were passed that limited both abia and mile traditions. Abia in Trinidad and Tobago Trinidad and Tobago, Abia includes the unique practice of the moko jumbi, or stilt dancer. Moko was a common word for Ibibio slaves. In the Trinidad and Tobago Abia tradition, a duan is a child who has died before being baptized, and is said to be forced to forever walk the earth at night in English-speaking regions of the Caribbean. Jewelry is made from deadly toxic red and black seeds called jumbies, jumbie eyes or jumbie beads seeds of Abris precatorius containing the AB toxin abrin in the Caribbean and South America. By contrast, the moco jumbie of Trinidad and Tobago is brightly colored, dances in the daylight, and is very much alive. The moco jumbie also represents the flip side of spiritual darkness, as stilt dancing is most popular around holy days and carnival. Abia in literature 
Although 18th century literature mentions Abiyya often, one of the earliest references to Abiyya in fiction can be found in 1800, in William Earle's novel Obi, or, The History of Three-Fingered Jack, a narrative inspired by true events that was also reinterpreted in several dramatic versions on the London stage in 1800 and following. One of the next major books about Abiyya was Hamel, The Abiyya Man 1827. .Several early plantation novels also include Abiyya plots. In Marriott's novel Poor Jack 1840, a rich young plantation owner ridicules superstitions held by English sailors but himself believes in Abiyya. The 20th century saw less actual Abiyya in open practice, but it still continued to make frequent appearances in literature. The following is only a partial list. Alistair Crowley, a controversial English mystic declared the Book of the Law was dictated to him in 1904 by a non-physical being. CH 1 verse 37 reads, "...also the mantras and spells, the abiyya and the wanga, the work of the wand and the work of the sword, these shall he learn and teach." Henry S. Whitehead, who lived for some time on St. Croix in the Caribbean, published his supernatural tale, The Jumbi, in Weird Tales 1926. The story lent its title to his collection Jumbi and Other Uncanny Tales 1944. Zora Neale Hurston researched and wrote widely on the subject, including essays, drama, and the novel Jonas Gord Vine. The former slave, Christophine, in Jean Rhys's novel Wide Sargasso Sea is a practitioner of Abia. Solitaire, the female lead in the James Bond novel Live and Let Die, is said to have the power of the Abia. Quote, An Abia woman is a sort of matchmaker in Earl Lovelace's novel Salt. Ma Kilman in Derek Walcott's epic poem Ameros is a healer who uses Abia. In the novels and memoirs of Jamaica Kincaid there are several passages that mention Abia. There are frequent references to Abia in the suffrage of Elvira written by V. S. Naipaul a central character in Unburnable is reputed to be an Abia woman. The protagonist of the novel Brown Girl in the Ring by Nalo Hopkinson is an Abia woman in training, learning from her grandmother. She uses her abilities to defeat an evil Abia man and his duppy. Abia is heavily referenced in Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child's novel Cemetery Dance. A main character in the 2009 Yaw novel Three Witches by Paula Jolin Roaring Brook, Macmillan, is a native of Trinidad and attempts to use Abia to raise a dead classmate. Several characters in the book The Book of Night Women by Marlon James are said to practice Abia, and it is a focal point at a number of points in the novel. Shadowcatcher, the antagonist in the Nicholas da Silva graphic novel series Dread and Alive novel, is an Abia man who uses Abia to regain the prized amulet taken away from him by his brother, Cujo, the mileman of the Jamaican Maroons. Robert Louis Stevenson Jameson and his brother Arthur Conan Doyle Jameson are both practicing Abia in the Necroscope, the Lost Years novel from Brian Lumley. Abia figures in prominently in The Lazarus Curse Dr. Thomas Silkstone No. 4 by Tessa Harris. The story centers around Jamaican slaves in 18th-century England and the Abia men and their spells, talismans. Marie Magdalene Carbet, Martinique's most prolific woman writer, wrote a short story, Abia, now republished in English translation along with the original French by Michigan State Up as Abia and other Martinican stories. Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band, Golden Birdies, on the Clear Spot album refers to an Obi Man. Clearly a kind of voodoo priest. Up one hand broom star was an obi man, revered throughout the bone knob land, his magic black purse slit creeped open, let go flocks of them. See also West African Vodun, West African religion, an antecedent of Haitian voodoo Notes Topic. External links History of antagonism between Mayalism and Abia in Jamaica Abia Afro-Caribbean shamanism The Caribbean Black Magic Abia, interview with white magician